All right, good morning and welcome to uh, the first day of environmental science, uh, spring 2024. Uh, I'm Professor G and it's nice to meet you guys. Um, hopefully you're here for environmental science. If you're not, uh, I'm pretty sure we just went through everybody in attendance, but nonetheless, if you're not, you can sneak out now and we won't laugh at you. Um, environmental science is a, is a cool class. It is um, part of my part of my field. I'm an earth scientist. I'm an earth science teacher. I'm not an earth scientist, I guess, really. I'm an earth science teacher. Uh, by degree, I am a geologist and a paleontologist. Um, I got my bachelor's in um, geology and a master's in vertebrate paleontology. I studied zebra toes. Um, so I'm, I'm one of the few people that can laugh at these uh, handful of folks out there that get these really silly degrees because mine is almost always sillier. Um, but it did put me in a, in a really interesting position. I love uh, the history of the earth, all right? And you can't talk about the uh, history of the earth very long without talking about uh, the history of the environment as well, all right? Um, because one of the things that has definitely changed as the earth has changed um, is the environment. Yeah, our opinion. So um, uh, I've taught a, a bunch of different things over the years. As I said, geology, uh, historical geology, uh, astronomy, meteorology, environmental science, environmental geology, <sighs> probably a couple things I forgot. I briefly taught high school. Uh, it didn't really work out, um, not because of the kids, because of the parents and the teachers and lesson plans and all that horrible stuff. Uh, it just wasn't for me. Um, so I've been teaching. Um, earth science stuff to non-science majors for ooh, about 25 years now. I've been here for a little over 20. And um, how many of you are science majors? Got one. Awesome. What, what field? Environmental? General. Okay, cool. All right. Uh, we, we get a few. I've had one to two geology majors myself every so often. Um, environmental science, we do get a handful more of those majors, but um, because we've got a really cool uh, transfer plan with um, SUNY ESF over there in Syracuse, and then there's a handful of upstate, you know, that uh, possibly. But um, but more than likely, you guys are business majors or graphic design majors or history majors or whatever. And that's who I'm used to talking to. And over the years, that has um, affected my, my lectures. It affected how I talk because um, not necessarily that if I was talking to all science majors, I'd use different words, but I, I might go about it in a different way. Um, so I will say a handful of things that you might not know what I'm talking about. Please um, don't be afraid to say, huh? Or, or what does that mean? Um, the perfect example was, oh God, years ago, where I was doing, I have this, this little talk I give. I don't think you guys will get it because it doesn't really fit in this curriculum. But we talk about um, how the Earth came to be, what they call cosmology. Cosmology really takes in the, the whole universe. But um, I was going, you know, big picture down to small picture. So I've been talking for an hour and a half, and finally this girl raises her hand and says, wait, what's a galaxy? <laughs> and, well, yeah, but, but no. I mean, God, could you imagine listening to somebody for an hour and a half talking about stars and stuff, and you don't know what a galaxy is? And I just assumed everybody on the planet knows what a galaxy is. Um, are my kids any measure of that? No, because they grew up in my house. But my kids knew what it was, and so on, so I, you know. So I've learned over the years that not everybody comes into the room with the same same background. Okay, uh, y'all didn't grow up watching Bill Nye necessarily. You're little... I, I did. <laughs> handful of you did, and I'm glad he's still in the curriculum. I, I didn't watch him because when he came out, I was in high school and early college, and why would I watch this weird guy with a bow tie, right? But my yeah, son. <laughs> well, now he's a crotchety old man, yeah, but. Yeah. Um, but my son, who's roughly your guys' age, um, when he was little and we, the, the iPod and iPad were brand new and we needed, my, my folks are in Ohio, so we did a lot of driving, um, I stumbled across these things. And yeah, he's, he's great. I love Bill Nye, or I love the old Bill Nye. Um, he came here a few years ago and he's actually 
kind of an ass. In person? Um, yeah. He heard none of you. Yeah, yeah, he was here. That's and, weird. Yeah, it was it was neat. Uh, we had uh, we had uh, uh, who's it's as well. Um, Neil deGrasse Tyson came too, but uh, he was very nice. Mike Tyson. No, not Mike Tyson. Oh, no, not Mike Tyson. Neil, uh, Dr. Tyson, uh, Natural History Museum in Manhattan, the uh, the cosmology guy. But uh, anywho, um, so you know, not everyone grows up watching those and so on and so forth. Or some of you might have a, a, a secret, you know, closet fetish where you really love the Nature Channel and somebody else doesn't. So you all come in with something different, okay? And um, as such, I try to go down the middle because if I talk to the, I don't want to say the lowest level, but the least science knowledge level, well, a big chunk of you would be bored. If I talk to the highest level, a good chunk of you would be confused. So I, I try to go down the middle, but every so often I don't. Let me know. Okay, feedback. And it's just communication. All right. And, and, I, and I rant about this in all my classes, communication. So um, anywho, I've been here for a while. I don't teach environmental that frequently. Uh, last time I taught it was last spring. I really don't teach the lab that often, uh, but I know how to do it. Um, so some of you, as I said, will have me for labs. Some of you will have some of the other lab teachers. Unlike my classes, the geology and the earth science, lab plays a much more integrated role in your grade, your final grade, excuse me again. And um, don't blow off lab, okay? That's all I can say over and over again. It will seriously bite you in the butt. Um, especially that lab report, okay? When it comes to that time, I'm going to start pestering you guys about it. Um, so, you'll hear that a lot. Anywho, I'm Prof G. That's what I go by here. Um, my office is actually over in Payne Hall, but, but nobody ever goes there. Nobody wants to go to Payne Hall. It's just to pay bills and if you're in trouble, right? Um, so, I've actually started hanging out in my uh, lab room, which is down in the corner here. Some of you may have walked by and seen me in there. I spend about five hours a week in there when I'm not teaching classes. It's right down in the corner. It's 221. You did have a question earlier. I'm sorry. Go ahead. How do you say your last name? Giapo. But Giapo. Yeah, that's why I go by Prop G. And it's easy to say. <laughs> so, um, so, my office hours, let me scroll a little bit here. All right. Uh, after this class, on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and then Monday mornings, I'm in there as well. Um, today's the exception. I've got to uh, run home and swap out with my wife for the waiting for the dishwasher repair guy. We've been without a dishwasher for a week and a half, and it is horrible. Um, and we never had one until like three years ago, but oh my gosh, can't live without it now. Um, so, you know, if you look me up on the interweb somewhere and you see a pain hall thing for off, don't, don't go there. I'll be down in my lab room, okay? And there's one time, it might actually be on Thursdays, where for like half of those hours there's actually a lab scheduled, I'll be right next door. You, again, you'll see me, but uh, in the room where they teach Spanish and uh, I think geography is in there all the time. Um, Professor Chase and Professor Santos spent a lot of time in there. So if you had them, you know what room I'm talking about. But it's right there. Uh, I'll, I'll be over there. Um, I found I get a lot more interaction with you guys if I'm actually in this building. You're walking by and you say, oh, hey, I know that guy, and I actually, you know, I got a question for you. So, um, so the phones, the phones anymore are a joke. We did keep them in the rooms, um, but nobody has a phone on their desk anymore. Again, not that I'm in my office to see my desk, but we've, we've switched over to these weird computer phones. Uh, so in theory, my, my computer could ring, I guess, at any moment. I don't even know how it works, but um, don't. Don't call my phone. Um, I think it will, if you leave a voicemail, I think it will email me the voicemail. But uh, I'm not sure how that works. Again, because it doesn't get used. Um, so, if not office hours, email, if I haven't said that four times already, is the best way to get in touch with me. How I get in touch with you uh, I'll show you in a couple minutes, is the class site. I post announcements, okay? And those announcements will email you. And more so, if you're smart, i got to check the name of it here, you will get yourselves the Pulse app. Um, 
If you guys were here in fall, which I assume most of you were, uh, you're familiar with D2L or uh, Brightspace, as some yes. of us call it, okay? Um, before that, if you were here last year, you know we used to use uh, Blackboard. And everybody, not just you guys, is still getting used to D2L. So please be patient with your teachers. Um, I'm still having issues. I even taught over the summer with it. I thought I'd get a, a leg up on and I did, apparently, on some of my colleagues. But there's still stupid little checkboxes that are hidden that you don't even think would exist. Um, and uh, we're, we're, we're learning through this anyhow. But back to my point. If you go to the App Store or the Google Store or whatever they call it, um, and uh, type in Brightspace, they're going to show you an app called Pulse. I have no idea why it has a different name, but they do. Get it. Sign in. And what's nice about that is anytime any of your teachers posts an announcement or puts up a new lecture or a lab or whatever, it gives you a little ding, okay? Like, um, you know, that your phone tells you it's going to rain in 20 minutes or whatever. It's, so you get a little pop-up. And that way you'll always be in touch. Let's say it's the night before a test, and uh, I told you that this, that, and the other thing are going to be on the test. But when I actually sit down to make it, I'm like, oh, my God, if I put all that content on there, it's going to be, you know, 20 pages long. I can't do that to them. So I might at the last minute say, hey, Chapter 4, not going to be on the test. I'll put that in an announcement, but if you don't have, if you don't check email or you don't have that thing on there, you might not see it till the next morning and you stayed up all night, you know, learning Chapter 4, so on and so forth. That's an extreme example, but regardless, um, it's worth checking it out. If you don't already have it, get it, sign in. Um, it's pretty quick. Uh, Blackboard sometimes would... Uh, often take an hour, hour and a half from when I post something to when it emails you guys. Um, I've noticed with this, I start, especially in the beginning of the semester, it's kind of a pain in the ass in the beginning of the semester because there's so many pop-ups. Every time I load your syllabus and then this and then that, you're going to get a little ding. But it will slow down, I promise you. It will slow down. And it's all your tea. It will give you all your classes, I'm pretty sure. If you don't like pick a class. Maybe you can. I don't know. Uh, if you hadn't already figured this out, apparently half of you aren't sure when and where we have class. Um, it is here. Now, we did change rooms. There's supposed to be a sign. Was there a sign on the door? Did you guys, or did you? Yes, I saw it. Okay. They changed it online on course search. It got changed automatically. But some people, if they printed out a schedule, you know, in September, um, it would have had a different room. I need windows. I don't exactly get claustrophobic on the inside there, but... When we have empty rooms with windows, I see no reason, especially for environmental science or geology and earth science or whatever. Um, it's good to have windows. So they moved me. I was very happy. Uh, mailbox, again, I can't foresee a reason you would need my mailbox, but it's downstairs across from uh, CCED, you know where that is, that, that office for corporate and community education and development. Stuff that run, they run like swim lessons and basket weaving and all that fun stuff. If you took a summer class when you were a kid for you know computer programming or Star Wars or whatever, it ran through them. Your lecture text. Um, hell's bells. I actually don't know. Did you guys go to the bookstore and buy a lecture test? Or uh, okay, I didn't know. I'm not the primary on this class. As I started to say earlier, I'm a geology teacher, and I occasionally teach environmental science. Um, I don't know if, if uh, Professor Williams, who many of you may have for left, signed us up for that first day access thing. You guys know what that is? A lot of the teachers are going over to it. You automatically get your book in uh, Brightspace, in D2L. You pay for it. A lot of people think it's free. I have a couple email people I need to email. online. I, I teach online classes as well. I said, yeah, I found the free book. It isn't free. You paid for it. You just didn't see it in your bill. Um, the book automatically shows up in on your class site at any rate. But if you guys are going to the bookstore and buying it, then it sounds like she didn't sign you up for that. Um, I don't see any reason why you can't find an older edition. All right, a little cheaper if you can, that's fine. I expect that you'll read the chapters, all right, but I don't do assignments out of it. Uh, I'm never going to say, okay, open up to page 35, let's all look at this and talk about this. 
I want you to have the, the book for background information to, to be able to read the chapter, ideally before lecture, but I know often it happens after lecture, and say, oh, okay, that's what the hell Joppa was talking about. I, I see it now. It's, it's, a, it's a backup for us, for lack of a better word. Um, so get a copy of the lecture book. Again, if, if your money's tight or whatever, and you can find the ninth edition on Amazon for 25 bucks or a buddy of yours took it, you know, three semesters ago and you know, just buy me a cheeseburger and we're even. I'm fine with that. Okay. Your lab book is, is not quite so bargainable. That you really should get a copy of. There is a PDF of it on, um, my site and I'm pretty sure your other lab teachers will have that as well. Um, but uh, you, you really can't do labs in PDFs unless you're seriously high tech. You know, like you've got a, an Apple Pencil and you can write in the blanks on your iPad and so on and so forth. And you're hooked up to the network and you can print it out and hand it to your teacher. Or you have the gumption to actually go print out a handful of pages before lab each week. I don't recommend ebooks for lab. All right. My own class has an ebook that the editor insists that I advertise. Um, I think it's a stupid idea for lab, but it's really nice that she provides it for you guys um, for reading at the very least. But you 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 need the worksheets, okay? You need the worksheets, so um, I wouldn't rely on the PDF, but it is there. So I don't generally read course descriptions and um, objectives, okay? They're there if you want to. Um, this is an environmental science class, so we're going to learn about environmental science-y kind of stuff. I have uh, an ecology background, more so. Uh, as I, I might have said earlier, I'm, I'm surface processes and critters. I'm not even like a rocks and minerals geology kind of guy. I'm, I'm a surface of the earth, is what I study. Um, so again, this is, this is why I can teach this class. I often lean towards the ecology line. And um, you, you may or may not think that ecology is any different than environmental science. It, it can be, okay? And I will try to stay true to, um, you know, the topics that are in here. Um, where, they, where they differ is that uh, environmental science gets a bit more into the nitty gritty of, of, of energy exchange and energy transfer. All right. And instead of just talking about, you know, if this were an ecology class, um, especially a 101 for primarily non-science majors, you know, we might talk about producers and consumers and decomposers. But environmental science gets into the point of, okay, well, let's actually trace that nitrogen through. And I know you guys could give a rat's butt about that, but it is in the context of, of the class. And yeah, you'd much rather learn how mushrooms break stuff down and, and, and that, okay, yeah, I didn't realize they were decomposers and, and the more superficial stuff. But every so often, we will have to dive a little little deeper. Um, and that is why the lab is such an important component in this class, is because what we'll talk about it a little bit in here, you guys will actually go into lab and uh, say in a water quality um, uh, week, you know, you'll be measuring for nitrogen concentrations and dissolved oxygen and, and, and all these other things. Um, so it, it, it builds on it. So if I don't talk about it in here, you get in there and you're a little, a, a little clueless, uh, especially if you have one of the other lab teachers who assumed you had it in lecture. So I, I have to stay true to this, but every so often you'll find me wandering off the crunchy nutty trail and, uh, you know, I'll be, I'll be talking about wolves and bunnies and, and uh, trees and stuff like that. So, um, but we'll talk about niches, a um, little bit of population dynamics. I also don't focus on the human stuff so much. I'd like to think that there's not a person in the room here that would argue that we're, we're, we're mucking stuff up pretty bad. Okay. You know, being the control of the planet? Yeah, that. That's kind of cool. um, So, do we need to, to take a chapter and talk about all the ways that we're doing that? when you're probably already aware of it. Eh. Um, and overpopulation is, is another big one. And um, yes, we're overpopulated, okay? And But I think you guys know enough already, you know, after 
20 some years, 18 some years of hearing about nature keeps itself in check and, and all these things. Um, you know, the, 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 we need wolves because then we don't get too many deer. And if we get rid of the wolves, then we have too many deer. And then they, people hit them with their cars and or that's why we have to allow hunters to kill them and, and all these fun things. So are, if there are enough predators, the prey, there will be too much prey? Yes, exactly. And again, maybe you guys don't know that walking in the door. I just assume everybody does. And that's, that's one of my, that's a me problem. We want to make sure it doesn't turn into a you problem. So if you get to that and you're like, like you just did, thank you. Um, if you didn't quite get with like, yeah, check with it. Ask me. Say, wait, did you just say? Yes, I, I did. Um, because I sometimes forget. Again, not everybody has the same background. But, so going back to the, the overpopulation thing, humans, yeah, we don't really do that. Okay? We tend to, to uh, adapt, overcome. Uh, if we run out of housing, places to build houses, we cut down forests. If we uh, get too hot, uh, we make air conditioners. If we get too cold, we make heaters. We are out of this cycle, out of this system, in, in my opinion. Um, and uh, then we make all these plastics, microplastics. It's in the news all the time now, right? Um, my wife was freaking out about because water bottles are what you hear about. And uh, she's like, so all this, we, we really should stop using water bottles, which is true, because um, all these microplastics in them. I'm like, okay, how much of the food we just bought this past week came in plastic? Yeah. Uh, okay. I'm like, so microplastics. And she's, she's a trained but non-practicing geologist, so she's had a lot of the same classes I've had. Um, she's like, oh, right, it's in everything. It's in everything. So you're going to hear about water bottles in the news, but every single piece of plastic you use is shedding those microplastics. So, yeah. I'm going back to the water bottles. I remember I was watching this one YouTube video. It was really about stuff that you see this young kid like, about like, dry plastic. And one thing is like, don't use water bottles. Don't you love the ocean, bro? And the ocean? Yeah. Yeah, I guess that's kind of cool. And that's, you know, and that, that, is, that is something you guys have. YouTube, mixed blessing. Um, there's a lot of stuff out there. We used to have to rely on commercials, uh, public service announcements. Radios. And, and radios, yeah. Well, either way, radios on TV or whatever, uh, or commercials on TV or radio. But to spread these, these words, good and bad, um, and you guys now, you've got them, you know, out there on YouTube and social media and, and all, yeah, yeah. So, anywho, lest I digress. Um, so that's, that's what we're, content-wise, what we're doing in here. A um, little bit of everything. We're going to start with a basic introduction about science and, and whatnot, and then we're just going to going to jump into some stuff. Um, in here, a little different than some of my other classes. Um, actually, I think there's no comprehensive exam in here. I don't think Professor Williams has one, and I don't want to be the only guy that gives a final exam, unless you guys really want one. I'm glad to give you one. Uh, tests are two thirds of your final grade, and lab um, is one third. This is still I copied and pasted one of my other syllabi to turn this into a uh, environmental science one. I should have changed a few things. Um, in my other classes, I've got instead of lab, I have everything else because there's a few things in lecture that go into lab, and there's a couple big tests in lab that go into my testing file. But in here, it is essentially lecture and lab, all right? Which again, why I can't emphasize enough, um, lab is worth 33% of your grade. It doesn't sound like a whole lot, but it is a good chunk when it comes down to do the final math in the end, okay? Um, please go to lab, please do your labs. Doing one or the other isn't enough. Tests, I think, in here are going to be um, in Brightspace. They're going to be online. All right. uh, I haven't taught this, as I said, in uh, since last spring. Last spring, we were still on Blackboard. And last spring, I was still pretty much doing paper tests. This fall, um, the students came in expecting a lot more of online testing. More and more, more of my colleagues are doing it. And whether I'm a fan of it or not, you guys are getting to the point where you're starting to expect it. Um, 
it's again good and bad. Everything is good and bad. Um, what I'm going to ask is if we do end up doing this, and I'll let you know soon. Uh, I'd still like you to take it here, bring a laptop, a tablet, whatever. My big reason is I'm not. I am worried about cheating a little bit, of course. But my biggest thing is is that when you're in person, you can ask me questions. I haven't talked to you about asking questions yet. You know, if I haven't already said it six times, then I'm slipping. Uh, that's my job here is to answer your questions, and that doesn't end when you're taking a test. If you're seeing something and you're like, "Wait, what? What do you mean?" I'm right here. Ask me. If you're sitting at home taking this test on your on your computer, uh, or even over in the library, you know, you're on campus for some other reason. You're like, "Ah, oh, I'm just going to take it later." You can't necessarily ask me a question. Sure, you could send me an email, but I may or may not see it while you're actually taking the test. So if we end up doing the online testing, which I'm pretty sure we will, um, I encourage you to come still at 9.30 and, and sit here and take it. Whether or not none of you come, I'm still going to be sitting here. Um, I'll do grading or this, that, or the other, but I'll still be sitting here. Uh, so you may as well come and, and join me. Um, we're going to have about four tests. Might be five. I forget how this one rolls. Uh, I've been lately trying to do units to keep things a little more cohesive. Um, in geology, it's crazy because we do jump around a lot. It's like intro to everything. We might talk about, you know, volcanoes, earthquakes, and um, minerals, and those don't really connect that well. I love hurricanes. Okay. Yeah, I have talked about hurricanes too, for sure. Um, but in here, this stuff tends to tie together a little more. All right, as we build. Which is nice if you get what's going on. It, it's horrible if you don't quite get what's going on. But stuff tends to build and it does sort of wrap itself up into nice, neat unit tests. So I forget if that leaves us at four or five, but at any rate, point being, you're going to have a handful of tests. All right. And I don't think we'll have the, uh, the final exam. Um, I will have a, uh, mine. It is. Okay, thank you. Was there not a sign on the other was door? Was it originally with Legacy Learning? It was. Okay. So yeah. you're meeting here every day then? Or whatever day? Then? Yeah. Okay. Tuesdays and Thursdays. Did they not, so did they not put a sign on the door over there? Or? They're just like playing that. <laughs> they told me there was going to be a sign. I'm sorry. I'm just gone. I'm still on the first page of the syllabus, but I've been blathering on for a while now. And I didn't record. I am recording it, so you'll be able to listen to what you missed. Um, bum, 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 lab, basically. So what's going to happen is your lab instructors will send me uh, your lab grade. Generally speaking, we don't do that for uh, midterms. So your midterm is only going to be uh, your first couple tests. Hopefully we'll have two in by that point. So it's not just, you know, performance on your first and only test going into midterm grades. I'll do my best to ask you to uh, give you two tests by then. Uh, but lab will be in at the end of the semester. Uh, your lab teacher will give me a grade. And as you saw a moment ago, that'll be one third of your final grade, which which means, in case you're not following along here, I take your test, multiply it by two, add on the lab, and divide by three. Okay. And again, that is enough to 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 drag you down a few points, or if you just jump through all the silly little hoops your lab teachers are going to ask you to, it'll bring you up a couple points. So that's what we're hoping for. All righty. Um, other stuff, this is, this is mostly just, well, stuff you see in all your, all your classes. Um, I already went on about how attendance is important because I test based on my lectures, not just straight out of the book. All right. Um, so you want to, you want to be here. Um, you're going to want to uh, take notes. I have PowerPoints, um, which will be on your class site. Okay. Some people love to have those printed out and brought with them to take notes on while we're talking about it in class. That's great if you like to do it. Um, I don't do that whole guided notes thing. I don't know how many of you are just out of high school and, and whatever, but I know that's a thing nowadays. I don't collect your PowerPoint handouts. I'm there for you. Uh, some people don't print them out until the night before the test um, because they heard from somebody else that that's a really good way to study for my test is to look at PowerPoints. Um, I suggest a combination of both. 
taking notes and going back through the PowerPoints. Uh, some people never print them out at all, all right? Um, but it'd be a good idea, I think, if you do that. So, um, I don't give homework, all right? I don't have, um, I don't assign the questions at the back of the book or write the vocabulary words out. If you know that works for you in other classes, please do it, because it'll help you. But I don't assign it, I don't collect it, I don't give it points. Um, and again, that's good and bad. It, it means, yay, I don't have a homework for environmental science. But that also means you tend to forget about the fact that you have this class, um, short of coming here twice a week to, to, to hear me. But um, the point is, is, is do keep up. Keep up on the reading, all right? And even though I'm not assigning you homework each week, it actually gives you a little more responsibility here. You need to, to, to keep up on this stuff. Um, as we were talking about just before you guys came in, testing will most likely be online, okay? And um, they are closed book tests. It's just like if you were sitting here. Uh, and again, I encourage them to please do come and actually sit here uh, and take it just on your laptop or whatever so you can ask the questions. But um, if somehow, you, even though it's online, you still manage to miss a test, um, you got to call and tell me why, email and tell me why, okay? I have in here that I need a doctor's note. I, I don't usually ask for that. If we're on the third test that you've missed and you've given me some variety of a different excuse every single time, yeah, we're going to, you know, do paperwork. But um, just just try not to, to, to miss any. Um, if you had an online class and you know that online tests or you're used to online tests being open for 24 hours or 36 hours or whatever, that's not how it works when we have an on-campus class. I will keep the test open until, you know, say after lunch, 1 o'clock, something like that. Okay, again, I strongly encourage you to take it during class time. But if you, excuse me, choose for whatever reason to stay home and you sleep in, I wouldn't blame you. I wouldn't blame you. You can't take it like the next day. You still have to take it within an hour or two of class time, okay? So please, um, and that's, if anything, probably how you'll miss a test. Um, but hopefully you won't miss any tests. I don't give points to attendance in lecture, officially. As I was explaining in one of my other classes, um, there is that weird sort of nebulous thing that all teachers do at the end of the semester when we're doing up final grades. Um, if we know you, if we're <laughs> familiar with you, um, and we see that you're teetering on the brink of a grade, um, we are more likely to, to bump you up, okay? But, and this doesn't happen so much here unless you're totally, you know, absenteeism. Um, you get down there and you're like, who the hell is this kid? Are they on? I see they took two out of the four tests. Uh, they turned in half the labs. I don't even recognize their name. Uh, you're probably not going to get a whole lot of benefit of the doubt there. All right. So I don't want to say that attendance doesn't count in lecture, but it, you know, it helps. In lab, it totally counts. You're going to get, at least in mine, and I think many of the others, you're going to get points, you know, just for showing up and, and doing things. Uh, additionally, there's the assignments that you'll get points for as well. So please, attendance matters. In lab, if you miss a lab, please try to get to a different lab. Uh, there'll be a, a, a grid on the door shows you when all the different ones are. The hardest part is figuring out what day of the week they're doing what you just did. Um, labs are wonky this semester. We're running a Wednesday because we started on Wednesdays. So Wednesday is actually the beginning of the week um, for most teachers. And then so Monday and Tuesday are actually the end of the week. So if you miss, let's say you have lab uh, today with me at 2.30, for example, more than likely uh, the lab on Monday will be doing the same thing that, that we do on Thursday, or the lab on Tuesday, so on and so forth. And then on Wednesday, it cycles through again. Wednesday starts the next lab. And this, they'll give you a schedule, um, or at least like I do, they'll put it on, on the class site. So um, you don't want to miss lab. Have I said that enough yet? Communication, 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 OK? Um, again, please don't use my phone number. 
uh, unless for some really weird reason you need to. Uh, email's best, office hours are even better, and uh, I will be using announcements on uh, D2L to uh, communicate with you guys, unless of course you email me and I'll respond to that. You know, But if I need to talk to everybody, um, that's how I will do it. And I recommended you get the Pulse app so you get notified when there's a notification. All right, notice of students with disabilities. Uh, it's spring semester, so more than likely most of you were here for fall. But if not, um, you do have to stop by uh, the Office for Accessibility Resources. They go by OR nowadays. Um, and let them know that, hey, I had an IEP in, in high school and I really want it to be enacted in here. Or, well, I made it through high school without one, but I, I kind of have these problems and, you know, if you could help me with them. Um, you know, they're the people you got to talk to. Then they give you a sheet of paper, and then you show that sheet of paper to your teachers. Uh, something new that was brought up, and I, didn't, I really never thought about it before, um, you fell and hurt your arm, and you can't take notes, all right? They will set you up. Now, I'd like to think that any any one of us, you know, would be decent enough if you walk in with a cast on and that's your writing arm that we're going to, you know, be able to process that and not make you go get a sheet of paper. Um, but nonetheless, they're there for things like that as well, okay? Um, and uh, uh, things like extra time and going to the testing center, again, with online testing, that really shouldn't be an issue. Um, with the online test, it's a simple click of the button that you'll, I'll give you extra time, you know, double time or whatever to do it, whatever you need. Um, but, uh, but the biggest thing was, is I used to try and always talk you guys out of going over there to take your tests and they'd yell at me about it, but I still did it because I, I think it's important that, again, what I've mentioned, you're here, I'm here, you can ask me questions. They may be awesome test readers over there, but they don't necessarily know stuff about environmental science. So, or, you know, what a certain vocabulary word might mean or, or something like that. So that's why I always sort of argued against that. Uh, I don't know, maybe, you know, you, you guys that, that, that need these services do still go over there for online tests. I don't know. If you do, that's that's fine, but uh, but anyhow, so you know that, there's that. Um, uh, civility statement. Please just be cool to one another. Okay, we've got a whole lot of words. Come on in. Were you in the other room too? Sorry about that. There was supposed to be a sign. Um, so civility statement. A whole bunch of words to tell you to treat other people the way you want to be treated. Again, I like to think you've heard that in your 20 years of life by now. Uh, it works here, uh, not just here, but online as well. All right. And some people have gone the route where they treat people worse online um, than they do in person. Uh, please don't do that either. A sustainability statement, uh, of course, especially in this class. You know, we're going to talk about the importance of recycling. In theory, these green baskets are recycling ones, but they they seem to mix and match freely. Um, and it's something we've been working on, but it just, it's a losing battle. Academic integrity. All right. Um, you know, that used to just be the days of you guys trying to sneak out a, a crib sheet while you're taking a test. Um, and that has evolved so much now with this online testing. You you know you got your phones on your lap. You've got a whole computer in front of you. It's really really easy to um, look up answers. All right, you don't even have to text a friend or whatever. Please, if you don't end up taking the test here in front of me, uh, please treat it as if you still were doing that. These tests are not open note tests. In fact, that's why many of your teachers, if you've had online testing before, put time limits on it. Because everybody knows it, it takes longer to take an open book test because of the simple fact that you're digging around looking for content, right? Um, so, you know, we put these time limits on it and it really limits you. Um, in my, my online classes, as I said, I've been teaching online for a very long time. Um, I can tell instantaneously if somebody Googled an answer. Uh, not necessarily on my test, because those are multiple choice and, you know, it is what it is. But, like, when I ask them to give a definition of something, and I know not a single one of those words ever came out of my mouth or out of the textbook, um, 
and I and I, I half joke with them. If you're going to cheat, at least print out my freaking powerpoints and t copy the words off of there. Um, so, you know, it, it is what it is. Uh, you guys will get a little bit of it in lab. In lab, it's tricky. In lab, it's kind of tricky because you know we tell you work with your partners, work with your partners, work with your partners, and then all of a sudden, um, you know, you get yelled at for for plagiarism. The line is usually drawn, you know, with these lab reports. Write them yourself, okay? Write them yourself. You had a question? Yeah. Um, if you, you talked about the vocab word, could would it be considered to you if you just looked up what the vocab word meant? <sighs> if it's a word in the quest, that's a tough one. Okay. I'm gonna say no, but some of my colleagues would probably disagree. Technically speaking, if it is a word from that chapter or a previous chapter that you should already know, that's part of the question, yes, it would be cheating because you should have learned it already. But if I just say, going back to the example about the student that didn't know what a galaxy was, if I'm saying something about a galaxy and that's not entirely the point of the answer, if you wanted to Google what galaxy meant, yeah, that, you know, I... I Technically, wouldn't have a problem with that, but again, I'm not. This is a your conscience thing, you know. So, yes, ma'am. Um, I think the help desk had it wrong because. Are you not in environmental science? I am. But, okay. Okay. Is this the right room for Miss Williams? Well, I'm not obviously not Miss Williams. Yeah. We switched about a week ago. Uh, a week. Okay. That was my shoe. Yeah. The galaxy and universe are not the same thing. Correct. Universe would be a collection of galaxies and et cetera. And galaxies. Universe is bigger. Think of it as a file cabinet. You got universe, galaxies, stars, planets, and moons. Everything's kind of nested in different folders there. So, environmental science, you're in the other room, and I'm not Professor Williams. We caught up? All right. <laughs> I'm Professor G. For the handful of you that came in late, we, we swapped out about a week ago. Um, yeah, question. Yeah, okay. You said it could be said in matter, right? Because Brit went to the other room, but she left in front of the other. She was there for 30 minutes, but she was doing a homework. So you might, since you know her name, you might want to let her know. I did tell her. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, there really was supposed to, and in fact, I know the girl put the sign up. It must have gotten yanked down by some moron. Um, but uh, but I know for sure there was a sign on the door because she's really good about that stuff. Um, so, yeah, they also switched. I, I like Windows, and I hope, like to think you guys like Windows as well. Being in the inside of that donut is, is horrid. Um, so yeah, we switched to Windows uh, again, probably Monday. But uh, and it's reflected on course search. But it's if you guys printed out your schedules last semester, not only would it say Williams, it would say different numbers. So. Oh, it shouldn't. Like we're, like we're still in the course So if you have, I I got a message from her yesterday. I got it, and it was about. Um, changing the stuff. So, did you guys got that as well? About I'm still going to refer to it as. Uh, no, we got nothing. Yeah. I got an email from Miss Williams uh, in Outlook, but she said I didn't. I didn't know before because I already updated the email. I got one that said uh, she thought she got all of it. She was calling it a what was the old thing? Oh, Blackboard. Yeah. Blackboard treasure hunt. Yeah, that's the email I got. Yeah, I got. So, yeah, did anybody get that? Other than she, yeah, a handful of you. So I didn't know if that was because of a, if it was a general lab email that she sent out. Or what? All right, I'll have the the, the guru ladies over in uh, uh, EdTech sort this out. Um, she does have a. All right, we'll see. Because you're going to have you more than likely you have a Brightspace. Hold on, let's, I'll get you. You probably have a website for your lab, and you should have one for this lecture. I have no control over what your lab one says. Um, but this one should be me, and you should not be getting her uh, announcements. You'll get stuff from, from me. Um, so thank you for that heads up. And we're actually going to go to Brightspace uh, site in a moment, and we'll see Excuse me, what it looks like. I honestly haven't put in that much time on this class yet on Brightspace, because as I said, I just got it at the end of last week. Uh, I spent my time writing an apparently half-assed syllabus, because there's a lot of stuff in here i got to get rid of. Um, but uh, but otherwise, yeah. So we'll, we'll get on the same page within within a week or so. Um, 
hopefully by the end of this week. Yes, ma'am. Question. Okay, so what was the name again? Giappa. Brock G. All right. You may or may not have me for lab. I'm also teaching a lab section. If you have lab Tuesdays, I'm sorry, Thursdays, uh, 2.30 to 4.30 or 2.20 to 4.20, whatever it is, I'll be on your schedule for that one because I've had that for a couple weeks. Um, but the uh, the lecture is uh, is me now, and it has been since probably Monday. I think it was official on Monday. Um, so yeah, if you guys go to course search, you'll see it was changed there. Uh, it's interesting that it wasn't changed on Brightspace yet, though. So let's just uh, thirty more seconds. We'll finish up this syllabus, and then we'll go to Brightspace and see what's going down. So academic integrity, j d don't cheat. Right. Yeah, same. Yeah. So Title Nine. Uh, Title Nine states that no person in the United States shall, on the basis of sex, be excluded from participation in, be denied the benefits of, or subjected to discrimination under any educational program, um, receiving federal financial assistance. I'd like to think that applied to everything, not just federally funded stuff, but uh, apparently the way it's written, it's federally funded stuff. Uh, protections also extend to sexual harassment, sexual assault, violence. Uh, it interferes or impairs the access of equitable education and employment opportunities. Uh, hopefully that will not be an issue for any of you guys, but if, God forbid, um, something is going on um, and you, you're not comfortable talking to me about it, we've got people over on the first floor of Paint Hall that you can talk to, okay? Uh, please be aware of that. But um, I am also, like I said, uh, we're all trained, any one of your teachers. To, uh, to to basically tell you to go talk to the people at Payne Hall. But, um, you know, certainly, uh, it, again, it goes down to communication. But um, hopefully, as I said, that won't be an issue. Question? Doesn't Title IX already be graded for that woman to take the same word like as men? They're already playing something. Um, that, is, that is certainly one of the applications of it. Yeah, it is, it is not necessarily only for women in, in sports. Um, but that was, um, that's, yeah, I'm not a, I'm not a, uh, a scholar on it, but that was my intent, uh, understanding is that it originally yeah. came out of that realm, yeah, but, uh, but it does, it covers a lot of things now. All right, so uh, this will be again on your D2L site once I make a few edits. So, I mean, the site is on my on my site. So, yeah, I haven't changed anything on here because I wouldn't have. And here's her black. Yeah. Oh, see. Yeah, I did not post that announcement. So, do you have a code for your blackboard that we can learn? You should not need one at all. Um, yeah, you should not need one. And um, we were also talking about, like on my uh, geology classes, the book is embedded on the site. All right. It sounds like you guys are going to the bookstore to buy your books, which is, is great. It, one step of technology we don't need to um, worry about. But no, I don't have that stuff where you go into the publisher's sites and answer questions and do quizzes. And I don't. Well, that's what I'm saying. I don't think. I think you're really in mine, but she still is has some control. <laughs> Let me send an announcement out right now. Let's just do that. And um, oh, I'm still looking as a student here. Hold on. Let me get out of student mode. Let me send an announcement and see if you guys get it. So do you guys have the uh, Pulse app and all that? Beautiful. Get it if you don't. What are we doing? Try this again. There we go. All right, so that should come through to you guys. And if, if what I'm assuming is that for some reason two teachers are feeding into it. And um, 
that should be easy enough to correct. If they just have to make me a completely new site, um, you know, so be it. But, uh, but yeah, we'll take it from there. And uh, the way I will let you guys know if this is progressing is that um, I'll <laughs> post announcements. Um, worst case scenario, I'll grab an email. You got it? Okay, so you're getting stuff from both of us, which can be confusing. Um, she is the lead on these courses, and uh, I'm, and again, this was, I don't think they just gave me her space. I don't know. We'll see. They're, they're really awesome over there. They'll take care of it super quick. Um, and you guys should repopulate. And a handful of you, I think somebody, maybe it was my last class, told me that they just added yesterday. It usually takes a good 24 hours to get rolled in once you add or drop a class for it to disappear or get added. So uh, be patient with the system. They only run it, you know, once or twice a day. Uh, they might do it in the first thing in the morning and then at the end of the day. But uh, you guys should roll into any class, you know, by the next day. And if you don't, talk to somebody about that. Um, so today's is really just a getting acquainted and, and, and showing you around stuff. This is where um, you're going to find, let's get back to the main page here. Uh, where the PowerPoints are going to be. These little things over here are called widgets, okay? And these are all apparently her widgets still. Um, I'm going to have uh, lecture casts, okay? Like today I'm recording a lecture. Every day we'll record the lecture. If you miss one, you'll find it here. Lecture handouts will be another widget. That's where the PowerPoints will be. And um, tests will be under tests. I don't give quizzes. Um, so that will be disappeared. Uh, I may or may not have lab stuff on here. Again, your lab, I don't want to step on anybody's toes. Uh, with geology, I'm used to having, we have a closed system. Uh, we only have, you know, one geology teacher any given semester and they teach the labs. So you have the same person for both. All right. And so in that sense, I'm used to blending everything into one thing. So, um, you know, I don't want to take too much control out of, uh, other people's hands, or more importantly, post something contradictory. So at the very best case scenario, I might put the, the PDF of the lab book on there or something for you, but more than likely, I, I won't put anything about lab on here. Uh, your syllabus will obviously be on here as well. Um, and I'll take maybe, you know, five minutes on Tuesday and, and show you the updated site. Um, but otherwise, we're going to get started with lecture on Tuesday. Uh, we're going to do spend a little time reviewing uh, nature of science, scientific method, that kind of stuff. A little quick review on uh, pr protons and neutrons and whatnot. Uh, just again, so you know, the question you asked earlier about some background, you know, no, what if I don't know this word? It's why I take some time in the beginning to remind you guys of stuff that you might not have heard since eighth grade. Okay, so on and so forth. So. Um, so we do do that for a little while. I have a brief uh, history of, of crunchy nutty environmentalism that I like to give. Uh, I know Professor Williams doesn't do that, but I, th I think it's important, so I managed to squeeze that in. And then we start talking about nutrient cycles. Yay. Um, so <laughs> we'll get there. All right. And the point being is that the first couple of those things don't necessarily have a distinct chapter. Um, there's that introductory chapter that nobody ever reads. Uh, nature of science is in scientific method is probably embedded in there. Uh, sometimes the protons and neutrons stuff actually shows up in an appendix, for example. Um, but once we get fully into, you know, talking about um, uh, the food web, let's just say, that will be a chapter, okay? And you guys will be able to go to uh, and we'll get an index up here for you so I can, because I never remember chapter numbers. I'm just going to say today we're going to talk about the food web or energy exchange. Um, but you'll have a, tap, a chapter entitled that somewhere. So um, I'm never going to say today let's talk about chapter five is my point. So we'll get that for you for you book readers out there. And if you don't consider yourself a book reader, again, I strongly encourage it. It's great for backup and context. Okay. Um, get one. Again, it doesn't have to be the most recent edition. If you could find a really great deal, and Amazon won't take a month and a half to get it to you, get it. 
All right, short of the handful of folks that came in uh, a little afterwards, I got to get you down for attendance. Um, but to everyone, <laughs> any questions about anything? All right. And again, I fully empathize, empathize, empathize. Yes, that's the sort of the word I want. Um, with what's going on in lab, feel free. This is a safe space. I won't tell any of your lab teachers that you're bitching about what they're doing or not doing. Um, I do teach one of the sections, as I said, so I, I do know uh, what they have you doing. It's a lot of work. If you've taken other science classes around here, um, this is one of the tougher labs. I will not, I will not kid you. Um, you got to show up, you got to do stuff, and above all, you got to write that lab report, okay? Um, so consider this a, a safe space to ask about stuff like that or to grumble about stuff like that. Um, you've got five or six different people teaching the labs, and uh, everybody goes about it a slightly different way to achieve the same end. So sometimes there's a little breakdown in communication. Hopefully we can sort that stuff out uh, in here. Obviously, your lab teacher is the first person you should talk to, but if for whatever reason that doesn't work out, I'm here, okay? All right, again, any questions? All right, so if I already took your name for attendance, you're welcome to go. Uh, everyone else, I'm going to hit stop here and... Uh,